Welcome to the Creator Spotlight, the interview portion of the Spotlight here on Fightful. I am Stephen Jensen, joined as always by Jeremy Lambert. And our guest today is the Larry Bird of action figure collecting. He has, in my opinion, the most impressive collection of anyone I've ever seen when it comes to this. Not just action figures for wrestling, but everything. Our guest today is Sir Paul 64. We have Kyle Peterson joining the show. Kyle, how are you doing today, man? It's quite the introduction. Thank you. I'm doing good. <laughs> Oh, good. Well, I, 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 I mean every word that I say, man. You know, we've we've we talked before. Yep. Um, I'm a very big fan. Obviously, um, a lot of what we want to talk about today is your YouTube channel because that's been super successful as well and grown a lot since the last time we talked. Um, I guess just first and foremost, this is kind of non-action figure um, related, but I wanted to kick off today uh, just by bringing this up. I know you are a massive Terry Funk fan, and I know Terry Funk just passed away. You want to give us some thoughts on? on old Terry Funk there. Yeah, you know, it's tough. And then, you know, obviously Bray Wyatt passing away this, you know, literally a day between each other and stuff. And just, I don't know, Terry Funk hit me a lot harder, obviously, because I grew up with Terry Funk ever since I was a little kid. And, you know, I got to spend time on three different occasions with Terry Funk. So, I mean, it was very, ah, very surreal. It was a lot like the Ultimate Warrior dying back in the day for me. It's Ultimate Warrior and Terry Funk were my two favorites. And uh, Terry was super cool to me every time I met him. You know, I got to be his handler for the weekend uh, back in the day. And I spent time, you know, I had dinner with him and Mick Foley, just us three. I mean, just wild. But, yeah, Terry was so cool. And I loved Terry going back to when I was a little kid. Of course, that I quit match time frame with Ric Flair back in the day. That's really what brought Terry home for me. Then, of course, the ECW stuff. So, Really tough week. I mean, it's totally different than, obviously, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt Young, you know, he's around our ages here. And that obviously hits home as well. And Terry, you know, he lived a long life, 79 years old, especially for what he put himself through um, over the years. But, yeah, definitely, definitely really tough. Didn't make it any easier. And it was very surreal for me as I was in Texas for work. And I was on a plane, and I was wearing a Terry Funk hat. I was wearing a Terry Funk T-shirt. I always do when I travel to Texas. I always got my Terry Funk gear on. And I was back home, and the plane just landed, and the pilot said, you can turn your phones back on. And I just got bombarded the minute I turned my phone on. It was so weird and surreal. Here I am in my Terry Funk garb, coming back from Texas. and Yeah, so, yeah, not an easy week for a lot of reasons, for sure. What was it like spending time with him? I mean, you mentioned the dinner with Mick Foley, and then yeah. be, being his handler, just like being around i can only imagine the the stories that that he was oh, yeah. telling but yeah what was it like just being around him for those moments yeah he was super cool my buddy my buddy runs the uh, pro wrestling hall of fame up in waterloo and he he i've known him forever and he knows what big of a funk fan i am so he's like kyle i think i got a job that you're gonna want to do and he's like hey, why don't you be terry's handler for the weekend i couldn't say yes fast enough but i mean terry was cool i, I mean i Gosh, I don't know how many years ago this was. Like 15 years ago was when I was this handler for the weekend. Something like that. But uh, I'm sure I had the dumbest questions ever. What was it like for this? But Terry, I don't remember Terry ever not answering a question or being like, that's a dumb question or anything like that. Um, we talked business and stuff. He uh, he had a lot of stock that he was getting ready to dump uh, at the time. And I said, I would not do that. Trust me, I would not do that. And I always wonder because I never got to talk to Terry again after that. That was the third and final time we met. But if he didn't sell the amount of stock he had, he would have made an absolute fortune about a month later. So I always wondered, did he sell that? Did he not sell it? Because he was pretty adamant he was going to sell it. And I was like, here's why you don't do it. And maybe it was insider trading. Who knows? But I told him, don't do not do it. But um, but it was wild. I mean, Mick Foley's always nice. I mean, a lot of people have met Mick Foley over the years. have had an opportunity to. I mean, he's always nice. And he's on another level when it was around Terry Funk. I mean, that is his idol and stuff. So it was Really good conversation. And I remember, you know, working Terry Funk's table, I was kind of his handler. So it'd be like, hey, it's $25 for a shirt, $20 for an autograph or whatever. And, you know, and Terry would just place the blame on me all the time. You know, a guy would come and say, it's 20 bucks. Well, I'd do it, but Kyle over here, he's not going to let me do that for that price. I mean, he'd always blame me and be the bad guy, which was kind of funny. And he would he would do that kind of stuff and play it up, give me a little wink and stuff like that. So it, it was pretty funny, but it was just crazy. And, you know, and, he was still getting around. I mean, he was still banged up, but he was getting around. He did training seminar there. I was there for that. So I watched and listened in on the training seminar. He ran, obviously, his Hall of Fame speech, all that kind of stuff. So it was truly a weekend. You know, people say that. It's like, you'll never forget it, but I'll never forget it. I mean, it was so cool to see my idol up close, personal, see him for three days, you know, know each other's name and just wild. Just a great memory. I'm glad I got to experience it. That's for sure. 
Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing uh, those stories with us. And yeah, it was a heartbreaking week just in the world of wrestling with uh, Terry Funk and, and Bray Wyatt passing. Um, Jensen, I'll turn it over to you for figure questions now. <laughs> yeah. So a big reason why I wanted to have you on today, kind of the timing of it. And I, I really appreciate you checking out our interview with Jeremy Fidauer. I know that's somebody that you are a huge fan of yourself. Yeah. And when you messaged me and you were like, Hey man, that was a great interview. Like that meant a lot. Cause I mean, you're somebody whose opinion I really value in the action figure space. Um, yep. and I guess, um, if you want to elaborate on you meeting Jeremy recently, cause I know that was like a bucket list thing for you. Yeah. It's so funny. It's like, and it's a weird, I mean, everybody's got different bucket lists, whatever you want to call a bucket list. And it probably seems really strange for people like, okay, if you could meet anybody in the world, who would you want to meet? Well, I think Jeremy Padauer. I mean, how weird is that? Most people are like, well, I want to meet a president. I want to meet, you know, and for me, it was Jeremy because obviously I'm into the toys. I'm into the action figures. Jack's classic superstars. I've told the story numerous times. I was out, primarily out of action figure collecting. I was in the transition period where you're in college. You don't have any money because you're in college, but uh, you're kind of, you know, here's what I'm going to do with, for my future and stuff like that. And I'll never forget the day. Like one of, it's like a weird, it just feels weird to say, but like a pivotal moment walking into Toys R Us and seeing Jack's classic superstar series one on the shelf. Uh, because you, now everybody's spoiled by action figures. You got legends, you got everybody. But back then you got just current stars that were there. This was something entirely different. A generation of my generation that was a little kid in the eighties, you know, all the big stars, the macho mans, all, all the stuff out there, the warriors, the Hogan's, now we're getting these guys in plastic action figure form. And it's not speaking to little kids, which I'm sure little kids bought them, but it was speaking to people like me and just a turning point. I said, well, I guess I'm back into action figure collecting. And, you know, without Jeremy, it wouldn't have existed that line. If, uh, you know, depending how familiar you are with the line, there's a lot of stuff out there, but Jeremy really brought that to the forefront. He was just a punk kid at the time and he brought it up to Vince McMahon. I mean, that would be intimidating, uh, no matter what age you are, trying to have a meeting with Vince McMahon and sell him on something, and he did it. And, you know, say what you want about the Jacks. You hear that so Jacks all the time, but a lot of that is in 2023 eyes. But you go back to 2004, I mean, this was cutting edge of the action figures. And uh, just what he did and what he did for collectibles, I mean, he's very similar to a Todd McFarlane in a lot of ways. I don't think he gets as much credit as a Todd McFarlane, but just some of the stuff Jeremy did uh, back in the day for collectors and for you know, the brand and the uniform packaging and things like, I mean, it was just, uh, I don't know, awe-inspiring in a lot of ways. So I've been wanting to meet Jeremy forever and I never had an opportunity to, well, lo and behold, San Diego Comic-Con this year, there he is up on the, I mean, I had a video up there, like a short, cause he was up in like kind of the crow's nest up there where the employees were, you could, the, the common people couldn't get up there if they wanted to. And I'm doing a video, Jeremy, come down, come down, Jeremy. And, uh, but anyways, I did get time. I said, Hey, I'm Kyle Peterson. I'm a big fan of Jeremy's. Is there any way I can get a couple minutes with him? And uh, thankfully, you know, Jeremy's a super nice guy. You guys know that. You had him on your on your show. Uh, he was more than happy to come down and talk to me. And, you know, he, he knew of me but didn't know me. It's one of those kind of things where it's like I, I know of you. And somebody was just talking. He, he mentioned the interview you guys had where my name came up. And that's where he said, oh, I just was talking about you. They were talking about you and stuff. So we had that. But, you know, he gave me – we talked probably for a good – 30 40 minutes probably about a lot of different stuff and uh, it was just really cool to meet him you know he was he was a, a big passionate collector and that's what you got to have no matter what your job is or whatever you got to be passionate about it and i try to uh, not that this is my job but i'm very passionate about it i'm passionate about my job as well but um he was definitely uh somebody who was really cool to talk to that's for sure so it was truly a bucket list moment to get to meet him and then you know just uh, swap to him some messages on twitter back and forth now occasionally and stuff so just very very cool and more to come with me and jeremy i think oh i hope so man i hope so we'll i mean 30 40 minutes what's that a little peek under the tent stay tuned yes yes <laughs> well, i'm very much looking forward to that um you know i know you mentioned you have uh like your your shoot job you know i've got a shoot job as well and i know you travel a lot for years and that kind of like feeds into the collecting addiction and, and habit or whatever I, I call it an addiction like i call it yeah. a sickness um yeah you know um and I think that uh, you have the sickness worse than anyone I've ever seen, but it's like, <laughs> but it's, but it's, you know, it's, I can live vicariously. Drunk. Right. Exactly. I, I, <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, and I can live vicariously through you um, in a lot of ways. Um, I guess, is that, um, 
I, I guess, can you speak to that at all? Cause like you have kind of this unique opportunity where like you travel so much that you can hit all these different stores. Whereas someone like me, I'm usually hitting the same like targets, Walmarts, local mom and pop yeah. shops, but like, I don't really get out there too much to other areas. And that's where I think I'm missing a lot of like what I could be collecting because I'm just not getting around like you are. Yeah, it, it is. It's a curse and a blessing. You know, I travel a good eight, nine states for work on a fairly regular basis. You know, and you're in a hotel. Your company pays for your hotel. They pay for your meal. What are you going to do? You're going to sit in the hotel and do work. And yeah, I will do that before I go to bed. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go find a restaurant. And I'm going to hit this Target and Walmart and this Target and Walmart and this local toy store. And I'm going to hit that in my nine state area. So a lot of people are like, Kyle, you just find everything, which I do. I pride myself. It's like a personal quest for me. Even if I'm not collecting it, I want to be able to, I saw it out on the shelf. It's just kind of fun. It's like a scavenger hunt, I guess, in a lot of ways, but I'm like, I should be able to find everything because I'm in like 50 different stores a week. Most people don't have that luxury. Most people don't want to do that. Most people aren't that big of a glutton for punishment, but I always say, I, I love the failure because it makes the success so much sweeter, you know? So, uh, yeah, I enjoy it. And obviously it is, uh, it's a form of addictive personality. You know, I'm totally straight edge. I don't drink or anything. I used to drink in college and I, I could see myself spiraling a little bit. I said, I got to stop. I, I knew my limits. I know, I just know my personality. I've been like that since I was a little kid. And my dad probably fed that addiction a little bit. And he's on the channel from time to time. Uh, but he was a collector as well of starting lineups and other things. So we'd travel the shows and Toys R Us's and Walmarts and all that on the weekends as a, as a kid. And we were collecting it all. Or I was collecting a lot. He was collecting starting lineups. But he understood for good or for bad, even when I was a little kid, that like, okay, here's the back of the G.I. Joes. Here's the 12 figures. Well, we got to get them all. And I'm like, yeah, we got to get them all. So I've kind of, for good or bad, once again, I have a very completionist mentality on a lot of stuff uh, <laughs> for good or for bad. It, it, now this is going to be a real deep cut and I might be getting this wrong, but like I've watched a lot of your videos over the years, especially since like the pandemic, like I think yeah. the first video I saw of yours was your first big, like action sure. figure tour. Exactly. And, um, is your, is your dad actually a sleepy Brown fan? <laughs> he is. He is. Okay. Okay. So my, my brother trains him. He does boxing like to like, oh, be really? in shape. And my brother knows him really well. And I mentioned that to him because my, my brother watches your videos with me every now and then he, he doesn't, he doesn't have the sickness quite like we do, but like, you know, he dabbles a little bit and he watches the videos when he's around. And he was like, I was like, dude, I, and Kyle says his dad is like a big sleepy Brown fan. And Brian was my brother's name's Brian. And he was like, Oh dude, I could probably hook him up with like an autograph or something. Like I see him all the time. So I just, I, I thought that was kind of funny. This small world thing. My dad is, my dad is really funny with his stuff. I mean, he, we're a good pair. Cause I'm kind of out there and he's a good straight man, but he uh, like, remember outcast, obviously sleepy Brown was with outcast. That's yeah. how he got to know sleepy Brown. And, what was that big song like? Hey, yeah, uh, whatever that album was. I mean, I'm not a huge Outcast fan, but he Love goes, Below. He would always Speaker yeah. Box Love Below. Yeah, yep. yeah, there you go. <laughs> and he would always talk about that. Oh, that Sleepy Brown. That Sleepy Brown. He just he would always mention Sleepy Brown. I mean, yeah, I don't know if he's kept up with what Sleepy Brown's up to these days, but he would always mention it, especially back then. And all oh, <laughs> Sleepy Brown comes in, and. You know, my dad's a big fan of like uh, soul and R and B and stuff like that, and like uh, you know Morris Day in the time. Um, you know, one of the collectors up in Minnesota was actually like his bodyguard for Morris Day, and he heard me and I'm friends with him. He's like, "Does your dad really like Morris Day?" And I'm like, "Yeah, he, he <laughs> loves Morris Day in the time." But he got him an autographed album, and my dad was like just blown away. He couldn't believe it. It was too Tom. You know, thanks for being a fan. And but yeah, it was funny. My dad would always mention that. I'll never forget it. I think, I, like you said, I brought it up in a video. But you know, you know that Sleepy Brown. <laughs> yeah, I think you were. I think you had come across some of the like Funko. They do some of those figures that are like and some NBA players, like they're like Jimi Hendrix rappers yeah. and stuff like that. And I think that's where I saw you. Maybe that's where you mentioned it or something like Good that. Where, like we need, we need to get a Sleepy Brown one of these. Um, Jerry, do you want to get some questions in? <laughs> oh, I was, I was gonna ask you when you do all the traveling and stuff is there a favorite kind of toy shop you hit in the the nine states or maybe some hidden gems you can throw out there to anybody yeah you know toy stores are uh, not not as plentiful as they used to be and obviously no toys r us is anymore but i really enjoy the walmart targets i like to see what the peg warmers are in different areas <laughs> things like that but that's pretty generic but there is good toy stores and i'm a little uh, you know, I'm in the Des Moines area, in Des Moines, Iowa, of course, and we have three, Jay's, CD, and Hobby, they're called. There's three of those, and I'm a little bit spoiled because we've got three pretty big stores around us that I hit on a fairly regular basis. So those those are really nice. Um, I'm trying to think. 
you know, Chicago's got a few different ones there, but it's tough in Chicago. There's so many people there, and uh, prices are usually not the best in Chicago toy stores. There's a place up in Wisconsin called Freak Toys up in Sheboygan that is really, really good. That's definitely worth a visit if you're in the area. Uh, there's a few places up in Minneapolis, uh, Nerd and Out. Um, I think there's one in South Dakota called Rainbow that I hit every once in a while. Kansas City has... Um, Oh, what's it like brothers? It's called like brothers. It's a fairly newer store. I've found some stuff at those, but it's just, you know, those local mom and pop stores, it's really is just kind of a roll of the dice. And that's kind of the fun thing about it. You never know what you're going to see. And a lot of times you don't see anything good, but you know, the one thing you find in a million, you know, there was a bearded corporal Kirshner LJN figure, you know, the old school rubber LJN figures. And I was at a local toy store and they had it for like $10 and it's like a $500 figure. And they just didn't know what they had because it's the bearded one. Most people don't realize. And so you never know. You find something like that, a little needle in a haystack every once in a while. Yeah, that's the one that, that's got a variation where it's like clean shaven, bearded, and stubble, right? Correct. Like three yeah. Of them. yeah. So, yeah. And Corporal Kirshner, not a lot of people big fans yeah. of Corporal Kirshner. And you go to eBay and look it up. It's like, oh, it's a $10 figure. But if you get the right one, then people just don't know that. Now, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jeremy. I was mention you 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 mentioned that you've been collecting for a long time with, with your dad. What got you first into wrestling and then the wrestling figure collections? I'm trying to think. I was probably it was right after WrestleMania three. So somewhere in the summer after WrestleMania three is when I started watching wrestling. And uh, you know, just you're a little little kid and in the eighties especially, I mean wrestling was quite it was like superheroes on TV. So you're just kind of sucked in and obviously Everybody else at school sucked in. I always talk about the old playground, but it was always the chatter on the playground. Did you see Jake and the Macho Man and the Snake Bite? Or did you see this or that? Um, So that was it. You know, you follow along and something to have talks with your friends about and things like that. And then, of course, around that time, the LJN wrestlers were out there. And, of course, I'm a little kid, so I'm wanting toys. I'm collecting He-Man and G.I. Joe at the time were my primary focuses of my first collecting. A little bit of Star Wars as well. And then the LJN start making their way in and before you know it, you got the sickness. You're all in on the LJNs, then you're into the Hasbros, and and that was me. You know, I was at the perfect age, I always say, because I got to play with LJNs and play with Hasbros, and I even went back and forth between the two for a while. So that was pretty good. But yeah, you just collect from there, and you know, even when you're like 14, you're like, oh, I probably shouldn't get these toys, but I'm like, oh, it's just like I can't pass them up, you know, and then. Uh, you just, yeah, you just keep on going and that's what you do. And I, I was collecting a lot of stuff as a little kid. You know, you, if your parents were going to say, yes, you can get it. You're not turning it down. No, I'm good today. No, I'm good. No, I'll take it. Sure. I'll get this. Um, so yeah. And I never really stopped. I stopped a little bit in college time frame, and I sold my entire collection, my childhood one, which happens to a lot of us who either or mom gets rid of it at a garage sale or you sell it or whatever. And I pretty much sold almost everything. There's a few things I kept. Um, but pretty much sold everything. And then I always kicked myself like, what was I thinking? But I was like, Hey, I got to go to college. I got, you know, you're not in your parents' house anymore. You don't got room and the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. And then like I talked about jacks, it kind of just snowballed back into it. And I was collecting jacks and GI Joe, uh, the 25th anniversary GI Joe line at the same time. I really wanted to collect the masters universe classics, but just wasn't in the cards didn't have the money for it. And then, you know, as you get older and you get more secure in your jobs and life, you got more income and, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, I was going to ask, like, for your local stores, I'd imagine you hit your local stores a bit more often uh, in your spare time. Do you do, do the people that work there, like, do they just recognize you at this point? They're just like, all right, we're just going to go check the back for you know, the stuff that you're looking for. Yeah, I know <laughs> the manager pretty well throughout the years there. And he'll give me a call like, uh, you know, NECA Brian Frankenstein came in. I know you're looking for that. Like, you know, he's like a, a drug dealer in a lot of ways. Like, <laughs> hey, we got it in. I want you to come buy it for me, you know. So, and he knows what I'm looking for and, and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, uh, it's weird though. Like, it's it's weird because I don't think of myself as famous. I'm not famous. I don't know what, I don't know what you call it. I don't know, but. I don't get recognized very much in where I live, which is weird, I guess, kind of. I get recognized for my day job is what I get recognized for. That's what usually people want to talk to me about. So that, that's kind of weird. But then when I travel to places, I get recognized and stuff. So it's it's very it's very weird. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of employees of these places that, like, watch the channel and stuff, you know. Yeah, especially so. the toy store ones. They know, yeah. like, you know. 
I was in uh, Cincinnati a couple weeks back. I was at a store called the Toy Department. They recognized me right when I walked in the front door. And, you know, hey, I like your videos and stuff. I was like, oh, cool, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when, when it comes to the finding stuff in the wild, what's, you mentioned the Corporal Kirshner one, what's kind of the craziest thing you've just kind of found out in the wild of like, Oh, I was, whether you were searching for it or not, but you come across it and you just ended up finding it and it came across your radar. So for, it took me, I don't know, two years ago, I finally completed the collection. I was trying to get every single Jack's Ruthless Aggression figure ever made loose. And I was getting all those and working my way through. And it was getting down to the end where they had so many weird repaints and things like that. And these figures that came with rings. And they're very hard to find. But just because they're hard to find doesn't mean they're worth a lot of money. And that's the problem you'd see on eBay. It's like, well, this guy, we, no, none have sold for six months. This guy's going to put it up for $500 when it probably wouldn't sell for $10, you know? So there was some of that going on. And I actually went to a flea market of all places. I don't go to a lot of flea markets, but I went to this flea market on a whim uh, with my kids. And I went to this table, you know, all these tables just have different toys and stuff. And there was this Shawn Michaels Ruthless Aggression figure I needed. And it was a dollar, two dollars, something like that. And I, I did one of these, like, I can't believe what I, is this true? And I had to go to online. Like, I just got a double. There's no way like needle in a haystack. What are the odds of that? So that only cost me a couple of dollars. And honestly, the figure's only worth like 10 bucks at, at that. But people think it's worth 500 because it never comes up. But that was uh, one of the blow away moments. Like, what are the odds of that? That's just like a million to one. Wish I could win the lottery instead of that. <laughs> <laughs> instead of a ten dollar action figure yeah. that you pay two dollars you know, for. for. Uh, but as a completionist, yeah, that, that seems like a a very good find if, yeah. if you're searching for it for for that long. So hey, that's a that's a good deal right there. Yeah, what, what's what's the main line that you're like trying to complete right now? Like if there's like one one, I know you're there's always in the worst you're constantly collecting a lot of stuff but like i even not, i guess if you can narrow it down to wrestling because this is more wrestling based but if you also want to like talk about just like any other line that you're just really trying to complete no, i'm pretty much for everything i want i'm pretty much caught up so it's just as of new stuff coming out which isn't take some fun out of it but also some stress out of it as well um there's a few things like I've thought about going back. If you remember the WCW Galoob figures back in yeah. the day, they were kind of around about the same time as Hasbro. I've thought about finally pulling the trigger and getting the UK variants and UK exclusives. I never fully committed to that. I got the free birds, but I never got the rest. Um, so that might be something I end up doing one of these days, but uh, not too much going back. Uh, thankfully, thankfully, like I've, I've been thinking about for years and I'm really kicking myself now is there's the first ever, they always say the first ever wrestling figure line was Japan, the, the poppies, you know, the popies, uh, there was a Terry Funk there and I always wanted that figure. I was like, I'll get it one of these days. Well, of course, you know, it's exploded in value now, but it'll come back to earth. It always does. But I feel like I should get that one. So there's a few pieces out there I would love to get. What are some of your, your favorite lines, whether today or classic lines? You know, uh, the old school, I don't have any anymore. I got my childhood Flint figure, but uh, the old school G.I. Joe three and three force line. I mean, that was just, uh, if you were in it, you were in it. And, you know, the aircraft carrier I had as a kid and just so many hours. I mean, just hours on hours. I mean, I remember in the summer I'd spend 10, 10 hours some days just playing with those, using your imagination and all that and just building setups and wars and things. So, that one's a huge line for me. Obviously, the Hasbros and LJNs when I was a little kid are a big line. The Jack Classic Superstars line is an all-time favorite of mine. Um, I really like the Masters Universe Classics figures that uh, Mattel came out with in the 2000s. Those were next level, and I was just admiring from afar. And Many years later, I did get the complete set. But, man, when those things were being shown, I was just like this. Because that's really where I started He-Man as a little kid, and it's just – this is He-Man, like modern technology, modern looks. I mean, that was just such a game changer. But, you know, currently there's a lot of good lines. I mean, truly is a golden era for action figure collectors. And, uh, you know, I always say like in the 80s and 70s or 80s and probably even in the 90s, there was a lot of people that worked on toy lines and it was just a job. Somehow they stumbled into that job. This isn't maybe what they wanted to do, but they had this job. Now all these toy companies are like lifelong action figure fans that this is what they wanted to do. And a lot of that passion comes through out there. You know, I love talking to the Mattel team, uh, you know, Steve over there, Robert, Bill McKenna, another huge Terry Funk fan. Every time I see Bill, we, we talk Terry Funk stuff. And 
just the passion they have is really cool. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, you love those Mattel guys. But, man, they they love wrestling. And very fortunate as a wrestling fan and wrestling figure collector that the people that are on your brand absolutely love wrestling. And same thing for the Jazzwares team. Uh, a lot of those. And Jeremy, of course. Um, that is something you don't always get. I mean, you think of, I mean, heck, go to go to Walmart. Let's say, let's pick on that poor Walmart manager. He's working in the tire and lube at Walmart as the manager. Is that what he really wanted to do with his life? Pro- probably not. So a lot of those uh, toy company people that are steering the ship, this is what they wanted to do, and I think that is pretty cool. Are there um, are there any wrestlers, or I guess. Like, I guess my question is, like, are there any figures you want to see made that haven't been made yet that are, like, bucket list figures for you that you, that, you know, whether it's Jazzwares, Mattel, anything? Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I always I always tease Bill McKenna about Terry Funk from the Hell in the Cell where he lost, with the John Deere hat where he loses his shoes with removable shoes. So we've got to get that. And I know Bill would do that in a heartbeat if they would allow him to. And I wouldn't be shocked. I mean... Bill said, you know, we got some more Terry Funk figures coming and he's going to sneak a few more in the line. Uh, That's the beauty of a huge Terry Funk fan being in charge of it. But uh, definitely Terry Funk. I would love to see Jazzwares give me a Surfer Sting. Uh, As a kid, you know, it's funny is whenever I think of Sting, I think of Surfer Sting first, where probably 90% of the people these days think of Crow Sting first. But man, Sting, just like Ultimate Warrior, when you're a really little kid, larger than life, I mean, that was a big, big deal. And we've had Surfer Sting figures from, you know, Jax and Mattel in the past, but I would love to see Jazzwares give us the classic, give us a Supreme Surfer Sting, give us some of that kind of stuff. And I, I really do get excited about the deep cut figures in this day and age. Um, you know, like the Goon. I was, nobody was a Goon <laughs> fan. Uh, you know, the Goon, a hockey player, but it's just such a cool thing. And I, I love the idea of having at least one of every character that was there, you know. I, I get excited about that stuff. Power Town, that is, I give Power Town a hard time on my channel sometimes. And some Jesse Ventura conspiracy theories and things like that. But um, they really are, I mean, I, I met them all in person. They cornered me at PowerCon and said, and I said, uh-oh, I better get the video out. Let's do some conspiracy talk right now. But they even invited me to Alabama down to the warehouse to prove that the stuff exists. And I said, well, <laughs> I may be taking you up on that uh, tour, so we'll see. But um, I love what they're doing. I told them that. I said, I give you guys a hard time, but it's a lot of it's in love and a lot of it's joking. And most people that follow me and watch my channel know I'm kind of just having a good time. But uh, the opportunity of so many classic wrestlers that have never got wrestling figures, like the Rougeau brothers, for example. I mean, never had a figures of the Rougeau brothers. Now we've probably got an opportunity with Power Town, so... That's pretty exciting for me as well. And then the G.I. Joe Classified line is the other one because making figures from when I was a little kid into the modern scaling and stuff, that's pretty exciting as well. Yeah. You mentioned you mentioned the goon, and I, I got to say, you, you're you not the only fan of the goon because we did a like uh, a fake wrestling company. We did it on uh, TEW, and the goon was like my guy on this. <laughs> and so I committed to – it wasn't even a bit. Love the goon. Love it. And somebody sent me – one of the goon figures because I, I love the the goon so much. So there's at least two of us. There's me <laughs> there's and you. Two. I don't know if there's anybody else out there, but there's at least two of us. I was just I think I was in Dallas, Texas last week. It's probably it'll probably be on my figure hunt video this week, but I think I found a goon on the front of the pegs. I'm like, why is this still here? I cannot believe the goon <laughs> is still here. I mean that was kind of a hard one to get. It's been like two years, but it's still just chilling in Dallas at a Walmart. <laughs> See what what, I, what I'm really hoping for is more of like kind of like the late mid to late 90s like wcw cruiserweight like mid carter guys that like never really got figures like ernest the cat miller or like glacier or like like a good like billy kidman and like a yep. like the tank top or or um alex wright you know like something like that like Morris. modern some of those guys that just never really got figures like they weren't big enough in wcw at the time or whatever i i do think the changing of the guard is coming fairly soon i think you know the the kids like me or whatever you want to call it from the 80s the 80s wrestling fan you know we're all getting older uh some are probably getting ready to retire maybe if you're on the back end of it all and i do think we're going to see a change more into the late 90s stuff and you know i think mattel tried to do it with the wcw nitro stage and unfortunately you know how that went yeah. so I, but i think we're going to see more of that in the early 2000s ruthless aggression era kind of have their spot to shine because let's be honest there's only so many more hulk hogan's you can make there's only so many more you know, and like the Macho Man is not being made anymore. And I think there's reasons why that went down. I mean, it's all business at the end of the day. And I think that is part of the turning 
of the page and the changing of the guards a little bit with that macho man contract is my guess. I, I was bummed out about that nitro stage. It was, it was, it was, in my opinion, it was too expensive and they didn't incentivize people with enough, like good, like there should have been more figures and, or like different people that like, you know, it, I just feel like there wasn't, if you're going to put that kind of price tag on something, cause like I want something like that, but I, I really need to be persuaded to spend that kind of money. It's a tough gig because I said it the minute I laid eyes on it at WrestleMania weekend, I said, cause we'd saw pictures like a couple days before that. And I saw it in person and I said, you guys got to find a way to get that visual through to the computer screens or whatever, because Unless you saw that thing in person, it was so much more breathtaking in in live in person than it was in any picture that they showed. And somehow, I don't know if you got to get a good photographer or, or what, but how do you convey that? And I saw that same things with the Thur- Thundercats uh, lair. Uh, that thing, absolutely next level. I've never seen it. I, I was in awe with my jaw on the floor just looking at that. And I'm a Thundercats fan, but it's not in my top five even fandoms, but next level and that's how that nitro stage was right up there as well and it's just tough i mean the pricing i mean you know i know a lot of people said oh it's too expensive and stuff like that but yeah i mean at the end of the day mattel is a business and they got to make money and they're not in it to even break even they got to get stuff and honestly mattel that their heads they don't want to do stuff like this this isn't it they'd rather sell you know 50 more barbies or 50 more elite figures out there this is not a waste of time but it's not something that's going to move the needle and make their bonuses. And this it really was a passion project. And I don't think Steve Osier and some of those people there would ever say it, but there might never be another opportunity for this. And that's the kind of thing that's really deflating um, about all yeah. that. And I know, I know the cost of all that, the tooling and stuff, and especially, you know, I forget what do they need? Uh, what was the, was it 5,000 to, to start? I can't even remember what something it was. Something like that. It was something but like that. that is nothing in the grand scheme right. of things. And that tells you that the wrestling fan base just a isn't into WCW doesn't have the money or just doesn't feel it was worth the value. And I don't know what you could put out there that they would think was worth the value. And, you know, they did say, Hey, we wanted to do the raw stage first because I think they thought that would sell better. And I probably agree with that, but the cost of that one was astronomical. They could take some reuse parts from the nitro, make that cheaper, get that out there then they can use that tooling into that to get that raw one cheaper on the next one and kind of all went the way of uh, the dodo bird. But I I feel like they're going to try to figure out a way, maybe not as extreme, maybe not as big, but to piece that out eventually. Yeah. I think if they made it with cheaper materials and didn't have like maybe the entire ramp or something like they, I I feel like there were our way. Cause I know that people came out like after that with kind of their own versions of like ideas of like a cheaper way to do it with like, Obviously, it, it didn't look as good, but it did still have, like, different colored lights that would flash and stuff like that. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you about real quick, speaking of, like, lines that didn't come to fruition, um, the the Impact figures. That was a real bummer because, like, I really wanted, like, a Jordan Grace figure and stuff. And, like, I feel like the the people in that company, the wrestlers in that company don't get enough love because, like, because it's Impact, you know? And, yep. uh you know, how do you feel about kind because of, I saw what, what Cardona was saying. I know that they hadn't had the best experience with like that line and kind of doubted this from the beginning. And I know you were kind of like skeptical as well throughout the process of like, we haven't heard anything in a while. Like, are we ever going to hear anything? And then the next thing you know, it just, it's just canceled. Yeah, it was pretty disappointing. I was very excited for it as well, because just like you said, there's so many wrestlers there that I'd love to have figures for that really have no opportunity to get figures. So this is our first time we could get, you know, a Jordan Grace, a Deanna Perrazzo, a Moose. Um, and then where, how far could it go? You know, you could get Alex Shelley and save. I mean, there's so many people on that roster you could get that we need in our collections. But, uh, yeah, it was it was rough. And I think a lot of it had to do with that epic Chella. I mean, that whole mess of being sold out and changing names and things like that and then i think they got really behind i i got some of the inside details on that as it was going and was told not to share so i didn't sure. share it but i, I felt like uh, uh i guess i don't know i always want to call it cella cella bought, bit off a lot more than they could chew that is for sure and then there was people that were trying to help them clean up their mess with not enough time to clean up their mess in and then then you saw you know impact not being totally in the zone of you know blaming asylum toys who they were just the distributor they weren't making the figures far when they threw them under the bus and it was just a bad scene all around and you know the rumor is they're going to try again and they're going to 
kind of fish back out there who could make our figures. I mean, it might be a good place for power town. Maybe power town could step in and this could be a line they can make outside of the legends. And uh, you never know. So we'll see yeah. where it goes. I like to see power town do it. I think they'd do a great job. It'd be cool. Even if they, if like I, Tony Khan, you know, is, is willing to shell money out and stuff. Like, I don't know if there's any way that we can figure out like a jazz wear just, just to get some, because, because Jeremy did bring up, he's like, you know, we can't talk about it, but like Will Ospreay and these new Japan guys, like, there's a good chance. And I'm like, well, I mean, if you could just get jazz wares involved and get and, some like some motor city machine guns or something, that'd be huge. And you're right. I think Tony Khan at the end of the day, he is a businessman and maybe more even of a businessman than Vince McMahon, where he's open to trying new things, open to helping because, okay, maybe I don't make a hundred percent of that impact money, but I make 10% or whatever that is. 10%. I'd take 10% over 0% any day. And you know, you're feeding a need and you're lining your pocketbooks. I mean, that is a possibility. And I could see that, you know, jazz wears, I mean, it's not going to be a lot of extra cost for jazz wears head sculpts. It would be, but they can use the bodies over and over. Um, I would love to see that. And it would be even more uniform, which I think would be great as well. I have to ask you about Cody Rhodes figures because we are here with Cody Rhodes, number one fan over here. So Good friend of the how... channel, Cody Rhodes. Over yeah, here. he is. Dude, by the way, he found your channel through like, like a different it wasn't it wasn't wrestling figures right it was <laughs> masters of the universe yeah right, that's right. <laughs> yeah that's awesome can you, can you tell that story real quick and 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 also yeah. Jim, what was your question of the cody i was figures? just i was just gonna ask for favorite cody figures and are, are there enough cody figures or can they actually make more <laughs> you know there's gonna be a lot of cody i don't think anybody because i think we're gonna get overloaded with cody <laughs> figures you know, and some would say we already are, but I think we're going to be piled Cody figures pretty high into 2024. So uh, you're a big fan of Cody. You're going to be happy. You're going to get every Cody you could ever want. I'm sure it sounds like Pharaoh's even going to get a stuffed animal, but I, I you got to believe they're going to make him in the elite line somewhere along the way. There's no doubt about it. So that'd be pretty cool. But Cody's an interesting. Yeah. I mean, he tagged me in a couple of things online, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, he reached out and he had some questions about masters of universe. It was around attorney. Uh, when that crowdfunding was going on and my, like my thoughts. And, and I remember he sent me a picture of like his office. And he's like, where the heck am I going to put this? So I'm just looking. It's like, it's like a table in a huge room with nothing else. I'm like, I see mountains of opportunity for displays there. But I, I think he said he did order a Um And then, you know, I helped him out one time, big bad toy store had it because he was behind on a couple of sets. He said, and, Big Bad Toy Store had a huge weekend sale. And I said, hey, sent him that and said, you better jump at some of those. They can clean up some of the ones you missed out on. But, And then, you know, he got the uh, Ultimate Edition and then that suited one. And uh, seemingly whenever he uh, talks action figures now, he always tags me, which is pretty cool that he thinks of me and stuff like that. I think that's a a pretty cool thing. And, you know, obviously he's really busy. I I talk to him a heck of a lot more uh, via Twitter Messenger when um, he was out with his injury. So, you know, now that he's back, I mean, he, you know, I don't hear from him a whole lot, which is understandable. He's on the road 24-7 almost. Yeah. I think his best figure is probably the Supreme, the Jazzwear yeah. Supreme. I think I really like the I, I really like the defining uh, moments with like the where they did his shoulder with the injury and everything. I thought that was really cool that they put something like that out there, too, for Mattel. Yeah. I always really liked it. Uh, I guess it's partially because of his dad, but Jax did a two pack, him and his dad it's way back in the day. Pack. Yeah. And him and the green trunks, that, right? Yeah. And I yeah. love that dusty in there too. Cause it's yeah. like, to me, it's ECW dusty end of the road, dusty in his jeans and his cowbell. And I always thought that was a really cool pack. And I, and Cody's the kind, like, I know if I was like a wrestler or whatever my dad was, and we got a two pack together, I think that'd be the coolest thing ever. And I, I know Cody is the type that would really appreciate, does appreciate things like that. Where The Rock, you know, The Rock got his three-pack with his family. I don't know. I've never heard him talk about it. But you've heard Cody talk about his dad and, and the figure we got together and stuff. So I always thought that was really cool. Uh, a very important question. I feel like, and you can correct me, you had a Hangman figure before we, we were on air today. <laughs> kind is, of. Is Hangman well, Page a peg warmer? Well, <laughs> So that's that's Kyle, by the way. That's, me. that's Kyle Peterson. Oh, okay. So I was all the back of it. Yeah. So yes, it looks like a, <laughs> a hangman Kyle. figure. Well, it is a hangman figure, but it's a custom made Kyle Peterson hangman. So, all right, so see, had I seen I the am... front, I would I could tell that it's not hangman page, but if you only see the back, can, can you flip yeah. it around so people don't think I'm completely crazy? No, yeah. If you just see that, you'd probably be like, Yes, it's a, it's a hangman yeah, page for sure. figure. 
And I absolutely love this figure because I I've been wearing Western wear shirts like this for like my entire life. It's always been kind of like I'm either wearing a heavy metal shirt, a suit and a tie, or a country western shirt. Like I have I have a huge wardrobe of classic Kenny Rogers '80s Western shirts that I love to wear, and I've adopted it to my channel when I do the end of the year best of awards. I wear a different country western shirt. Cowboy Kyle. Cowboy Kyle. So uh, it's so funny is yeah he is a peg warmer, but we'll explain. But I think Ringside right now has I think it's this it is this figure. It's like three ninety nine. Oh, it's only set three ninety nine right now. Three ninety nine. Wow. I'm gonna buy like fifteen of these. I'm waiting for like the next set to come out. I'm just gonna put those on the order. Yes. Uh, but I'm gonna buy like fifteen of them, and I'm just gonna make customs. I'm gonna put one in my office. I'm gonna give them as like funny gifts to people and stuff. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. But but uh, the whole controversy on him being a peg warmer, kind of, kind of. Uh, I'd say yes, but it's a little bit unfair because that the one he's talking about is the Walmart exclusive Hangman. It's similar to that one I was showing, but different, a little different design on it. But those shipped in like cases of six or eight. And it's kind of like the Adam Cole that's at Target right now. Every Target in America has like two to eight of those on the shelf. And the peg warmer is a weird term that gets thrown around a lot. And there's different instances of peg warmers. Like my area, I had a lot of fun talking about Rio. Rio's yeah. been on the it shelves in my area. Wasn't just your area. area. Wasn't just yeah. your area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that is a peg warmer. She's been around for three years. Now, Adam Cole, Hangman Page, are they a peg warmer? No, they were shipped to always be there. They are the limited edition at Walmart. And they want people to go to Walmart to buy these. So they're keeping them on the shelves. Now, a year from now, if that Adam Hangman Page is still there, He'll be a peg warmer. But right now, they're just ordering full cases of that one. Um, I think the Eddie Kingston is the next exclusive, and I think that comes out maybe at the end of this month. So depending how long Hangman hangs out after that, no pun intended, then you could call him a, a peg warmer. But, I mean, there's a lot of AEW peg warmers. Lance Archer, Nyla Rose, Anna J. I mean, depending on where you go. Um, but I wouldn't classify that one as a peg warmer yet, yet. But I think somebody like CM Punk, who I don't think he's knee deep in the action figure game, he goes to every single Walmart. All he sees is uh, Adam Page's. And for a while, I mean, if this would have been six months ago, he would have seen a heck of a lot of CM Punk's on the shelf because he was the exclusive before the Hangman Page. So uh, it's kind of all relative, I guess, in, in some ways. Yeah, right now, Walmart's, uh, for me and my area, it's the MJF exclusives, or, like, there's a ton of them. I mean, like, I mean, it's happening with everyone who gets a Walmart exclusive yep. or a Target exclusive, so. Um, that Wardlow, though, that Wardlow went pretty quick. You can still find right. him. That's true. I got I got one of those. See, I'm I'm a sucker. I can't tell you, and I'm sure you've done this plenty of times, too, Um, because I know you're the kind of guy where, like, I'm sure every day you wake up, there's just, like, boxes outside, like, just, yeah. like, you don't even know what's coming what day, but, you know, it's got stuff to open. And um, I've done this so many times where I'll, I'll be like, all right, I'm going to jump on, you know, Walmart or Target and I'm going to do the pre-order for the exclusive. And then by the time it shows up, it's a totally different figure. It shows up in the mail, it happens to be all the time, but I just keep doing it because I'm like, you know, because one time it worked and like, yeah. you know, you know, that's good enough for me. But yeah, I'm kind of in the, right now we're waiting on the Samoa Joe. I think that was the next Target one that I pre-ordered. Yep. And uh, I think the Kingston's like going to be pre-ordering soon from what it looks yep. like. So, yeah. Yeah. So Kyle was saying that CM Punk was telling lies. That is what I took away from that. Yeah. He was he was confused. I'm a, I'm a punk guy, though, so I'm a CM Punk yeah. fan. So I don't know. He's he's very polarizing. I guess you'd say. I think that's yeah. fair. Did you want that's... to elaborate on that at all, real quick? I mean, like, this will air on Thursday morning. So like, I mean, I'm sure we'll be talking about CM Punk live before everyone hears this conversation. If you want to kind of give your thoughts on all the CM Punk drama going on right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if anybody's got the whole story of last weekend there about like, supposedly, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you've heard more, but he said something like, don't use real glass or something. Like, to me, isn't that him kind of looking out for his his fellow wrestler? And like, and then you saw Jungle Boy go through that glass and be all cut up and bloody. So it's like, I told you, told you so. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if CM Punk gets a bad rap necessarily, but he's definitely opinionated. And we all know somebody in life at the workplace that, you know, just calls it like he sees it for good or for bad. And I think CM Punk is kind of that guy. And I, I'm sure one day he'll say I should have laid in the weeds a little bit more on certain things and certain things not, um, I'm sure. But I mean, at the end of the day, too, he's got almost – I'd have to think. I mean, there's definitely guys like Sting and stuff, but CM Punk was a major star for the WWE for a few years, good amount of years. 
he's definitely got some experience. He's definitely been in there. And I, I feel like he wants to make the whole organization better. Um, but I think there's a lot of, I mean, you take it into your own business life. There's a lot of young people that say, oh, I know better than that guy. And I, I think there's a lot of that going on. And then, of course, you get sides and, oh, I'm with him, I'm with him. And then all of a sudden it's, let's put him on different shows. And it's just <laughs> snowballs into an absolute mess. So obviously nobody knows all the stories on everything. But, yeah, it, it's interesting. Yeah, well, at the very least, very toyetic. We're getting a lot of CM Punk figures. I'm looking forward to the uh, to the CM Punk Walmart exclusive when that comes out soon, the Supreme um i saw the pictures going around i mean i i feel like jazzwares really missed the boat on that one is why didn't you give us one with tights one with trunks because you got I the, agree. A two trunk ones doesn't really make a lot of sense and then i'm concerned is that going to be stained that's one big concern i have too is that sweatshirt going to stain that figure listen jerry Pinauer, y'all know he's a fan of the or a friend of the show i should say i mean do you want to air your grievances real quick on the staining and the <laughs> pinless joints oh yeah he knows he knows yeah, okay. obviously the staining <laughs> i talked about but yeah the pinless joints and I get it's extra cost and stuff, but I just, you look at the Mattel elites, the Mattel ultimates. Now they're pinless. I mean, it's just nice and clean, nice and clean where you got the big pin. I mean, you can kind of see it right here. It's just a big old pin right yeah. there. And usually uh, if it's like a different color, you'll see it just sticks out. You know, it's just cleaning that up and it all comes down to expenses and things like that. So they've shown they can do it with the Supreme line. I'm just hoping sometime soon they take the leap just like Mattel did and say, okay, we're going to go pinless, because it just looks cleaner. And, and you know, I get both ways about it. And, you know, Super 7 is a company, and we're all familiar with Super 7, I think. Um, they have pinless joints, but people bag on them about the lack of articulation. So, me personally, I'd rather have pinless joints than articulation, but I'm not a toy photographer. I'm not somebody that's playing with them either. So, for what I'm looking at, just standing them here, I want a clean look. I don't want any joints. I want it to look as clean as possible, like almost like a statue. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's just uh, it's personal preference, I guess, is what it is. Kyle, I was going to wrap, unless Jensen, you have uh, any more? I was going to ask Kyle. I mean, I got to ask Kyle a question for the next three hours. But I don't, <laughs> I, I know. We, we said we do about a half hour. We've already gone over that. We can definitely have Kyle back again sometime, yeah. though, if you're interested. I mean, I, I have so many. I, I, yes. I, I love what you do with your YouTube channel, man. I think it's, uh, it's an important thing for the space. Um, I think that it's great to have guys like, broski and, and myers and those dudes sterling that like i think it's great having wrestlers and like ethan page and those guys who are out there like collecting and like representing for the wrestling fans as wrestlers but it's equally if not cooler for me to see somebody like you who's just a fan who is like has this fan base now and in i'll i want to give you a lot of credit you and i know this isn't easy right, from someone as someone who you know we do a lot of stuff on youtube and stuff and like your consistency with your upload schedule. And I know you have a full-time job on top of it. I know that can't be an easy yeah. schedule. That's a real grind because you're uploading multiple a times day. a day. Yeah. I mean, and they're all quality uploads. Like you're editing everything. You're putting in pictures of the stuff you're talking about. You're doing the little 360 views of the, the figures. And I mean, you're putting real effort into it. These aren't just like, you know, no effort videos you're just throwing out there. So I wanted yeah. to give you some credit on that, man. Like, cause I've, I've watched the grind from like, hardly any views to like yeah. where it's at now. And I think a lot of it is just the consistency and, and really just sticking with it. And that's exactly what I say. You know, I get the question a lot in you know, my Patreon or just on social media. Well, how did you do this? How did you get there? And I'm like, there's no secret at the end of the day, everything I've ever done, like my job, my day job things, it's just grind. And I will, I'll be the first to say that I am not the smartest guy and you don't got to be the smartest guy, but you've got to outwork everybody. And that's what I've always said. I'll never be outworked in anything I ever do. I will always work harder, longer. I might not be the smartest. There could have been a faster way to get that stuff done, but I will never, ever give up. And I never quit. And it's probably part of the addictive personality I, I have a little bit too, but it's a grind. I mean, I do. I work 70, sometimes 80 hours a week at my day job. I mean, it's a grind. Um, but Sundays is pretty quiet and I film, you know, peak how the sausage is made, but I film like 95% of my stuff on Sundays and I get up, you know, four thirty-five in the morning and crank it out one video after another, after another, after another. And then I edit a ton of them Sunday night and then I'll edit one or two every single night. And, you know, like currently on Patreon. So like wherever that, wherever that day is, I'm done. I think I have like 300 videos in the can that haven't even been on traditional YouTube yet. So, man, that's so, fun. you got a family too. Like, this Kyle's got a family, he's got children. I mean, a wife. I mean, this is like, 
you're, you're balancing a lot of stuff, man. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, my kids are getting a little older, twelve and eight, so they're uh, they're not as uh, I want to lay on the TV or I want to lay in my bed and play on my iPad. I don't want to go play at the park as much as they used to. So <laughs> that gives me a little bit more time, I guess, too. Have oh, your that... kids ever? Oh, sorry, Jamie. Um, this last question: Have your kids ever just like gone ham on your collection? Just been like, I want to play with all these toys, and just open one of your detolfs up, and like, is so that funny. just like has that just been ingrained in them so hard? I'm like, don't touch dad's toys. It's <laughs> like... so funny because I always tell my wife, I don't know what we'd do if I would have had two boys. I had two girls. <laughs> like, can you imagine if I had a boy that was like, I love Ninja Turtles. Okay, let's go to the store and get every single Ninja Turtle. That's what I would do. Oh, you like wrestling? Well, now we need to get two of every single one. I mean, and my daughters both went through the phase when they were little, when they were really little, like in wrestling. And and I've always said, any toy I have, outside of like my one of 30 Masters Universe He-Man and, you know, things that are on card, go at it. And she used to, you know, open this up, she'd take them and she'd play with them. And I, I don't care. I it's not about value for me. It's about fun and, and all that kind of stuff. So I was all in for them playing, but they never did. They never came down here or anything. And I have three dogs and they're on the channel quite often yeah. as well. I've never had one of my dogs ever chew up a toy of mine. I've never had that. And like you look on the other side of this camera, there's piles of boxes, there's toys. Like I was, I was telling Jeremy before, I was like, I'm trying to get this place under control, but I got a big mess going on and trying to get it back in you order. Gotta, you got to see a later pile in front of you. Just all the, all the empty, all the empties. <laughs> yes. So I clean those up pretty good, but a lot of times I'll do like an elite set and I'll put them all in a box and okay, I'm going to file them where they go. Well then you go, okay, I'm, I'm out of time. I'll do it later. And then you get the next set and the next set. And all of a sudden I got hundreds of figures. I got to put where they go. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm like, man, this is out of control. And I got a, a big idea for a new display, the final display in my collection. So uh, I'm kind of putting the pieces on that one right now. I was just going to, I was going to say and commend you on the upload schedule and the work you put into it, because like you said, you, it is a grind. And like, if you want to be successful at this stuff, like you just, you got to put in that, that effort. I know Jensen and I kind of, not not really joke about it, but we say the, the Cody do the work type of thing. And that is legitimately what it is. If you really anything in life, if you want to be successful at it, you have to put in the work yeah. to do it. And, you know, there's obviously various varying degrees of success. But, you know, like like you said, like no one's going to outwork you when it comes to this stuff. And I know a lot of people when it comes to their job feel the same way. It's like, you know, I want to be the best at this this so i'm gonna i gotta put in the work to be the absolute best in this and not a, not everyone has that mentality so i i commend yeah. and appreciate that you have that mentality because i respect you know that. i i guess i thank my dad for that you know my dad was a ceo of an insurance company and stuff and you know day i turned 14 kyle you can go work you got to get a job and you know <laughs> paved your own way and he never caught you know i hey dad i'm out of college is there a way i can get an insurance job no <laughs> no you can't and <laughs> stuff like that but my dad always said too and there's something to that is and we've seen i think cody rhodes did it like he says, you've got to put a list together of what you want to do and what you want to do in the future. And if you put that and you look at it religiously, you'll get where you want to go. And that was like how he based his entire career on um, doing that. And, you know, if, if you sit there and say, well, I just hope one day I have, you know, 5,000 subscribers or whatever. And my dad's always like, that's how many you'll get. That's all you'll ever get. You've got to shoot for the stars and you kind of kind of keep going and I don't know. What what are the stars? I mean, <laughs> who knows? It's all it's all relative. That's why I tell everybody about it. At the end of the day, you just gotta have fun with whatever you're doing. If you're not having fun, it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything. And you know, I have I have just as much fun when I had one subscriber as I do with thirty thousand subscribers. Nothing's changed. And I'm just glad people enjoy somewhat along for the ride. There's some people that don't like it, and that's fine. I'm I always say I'm not for everybody, not everybody's for everybody, and I always say too my opinion's no better than your opinion, your opinion, or your opinion. It's just one person's opinion. And it is yeah. what it is. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, like, yeah, I, I like that you all, you also incentivize your audience. Like, you know, once we hit this amount of subscribers, I do the top 10 on, you know, this wrestler and, and it gets people excited to want to subscribe and want to see <clears throat> more of your lists. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I think, I think it's just really smart how you, how you set all this up. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, it definitely shows from, I mean, you seem like the same guy from zero subscribers to yeah. now. It's just the, the, the hair length just changes. That's really just that's, like how, that's that's exactly how, that's how I know what, like if I'm watching an old video or not, I just look for how long Kyle's hair is. And I'm like, okay, this is recent. Uh, I'm so cool. ha- I mean, uh, I was going to say, I'm so happy COVID happened. Well, obviously not happy, but I got to work from home instead of going to the office and I got a chance to, cause I always wanted to once in my life grow my hair out. And I finally got an opportunity in that weird, awkward stages your hair gets to. I'm kind of in I it right now. Yeah, yeah, I didn't have to be in front of anybody or anything, so I could hide it all. And and then all of a sudden, we come out of COVID, and it's hey, there it is, and it's ready to go. So, yes, we'll see. Now, uh, I, oh, a yeah, loaded sorry, question. Yeah, yeah a yes. loaded question because we can see all the cool stuff in your room behind <laughs> you. But the favorite thing in your room? Uh, oh, probably, probably this guy. Let me. <laughs> he's just hanging out here today. He's laying on my feet as we do this, but. <laughs> <laughs> probably the dogs but in in the whole room yeah it's got to go back it's probably my one grail piece i have it loose but i would love to get one on card it is the ljn ultimate warrior um from back in the day i remember i remember clear as day being nine years old getting that for christmas and just you know that was a game changer when you played with your action figures and you got your favorite character an absolute game changer. I mean, I, I don't know how many hours I spent with that one. So I got a minty mint one that's really nice. But one day I want to get one mint on card. I don't want to pay the like three grand for it or whatever it would be, but we'll see. But that that is one I'd really love to get one day. But that is probably my grail piece, just because there were so many memories of that one when I was a little kid. So I, I always it's I sit on my couch over here and it's in a case right there, and I just sometimes I just sit there and look at it. So that's probably the one. Well, we haven't talked about it, but you know, Kyle here. Massive Ultimate Warrior fan, like Ultimate Warrior and Terry Funk, those are your guys. One of my favorite action figures of all time, uh, mainly because I was there on this night, but I, I love that they made the yeah. Ultimate Warrior of uh, him doing Elephant. the speech the, 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 the night, night before he passed. Yeah. yeah. That's um, what we talked about, I think, last time I was Oh, we did. We did talk about that because, yeah, I think I'd just finally recently gotten that figure. I got it. You got I a few of them right there. Yeah. I got a bunch of versions of this one. I absolutely love that figure as well. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Uh, it's just it really i mean it's just wild it gives me it always chokes me up a little bit it's just such a wild thing you're so lucky you were there i mean i'll never forget that night and just like terry funk it was such a weird circumstance because there's a few people like warrior terry funk and lemmy of course from motorhead those are like my three favorite celebrities or whatever you want to call it you know my dad will be the fourth pillar there but <laughs> just what a while and same thing with lemmy when lemmy died I was on the motorhead cruise and I knew that Lemmy was not long for this life. And I went back to our uh, cabin and I told my wife, I said, I gotta go back. I know Lemmy's going to be at the poker machine. I'm going to go t- say hi to him one last time. He died a month later. I just knew it was coming. And warrior, I woke up because uh, of the news broke at like 4 AM or something like that on CNN. And I woke up at like three o'clock. I could not sleep. And I usually can sleep. I'm usually out when I go to sleep and I went downstairs, turned it on and bam, breaking news. And it's just a weird thing. Same thing like getting on the airplane with Terry Funk. So very, very strange. But I do love this warrior. I even got a prototype version of that warrior since we last spoke. Oh, very cool. Very cool. (laughs) Love it. Kyle, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let everyone know where they can find you at. Yeah, you can find me on the X. Still getting used to that one a little bit. But uh, Sir Paul 64 over there. Uh, The underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads. If anybody's using that, I don't know. And then Instagram as well. And then YouTube, of course, search Kyle Peterson. I always say there's two people with Kyle Peterson on YouTube. There's some survivalist expert that has like 4 million followers. And then there's the action figure one. So I'm the action figure <laughs> one. <laughs> Kyle, again, thank you for joining us, guys. All the links are below in the description. So you can just direct click, go go there, go support and follow Kyle. Go check out the channel. Go follow him. I'll always call it Twitter. Go follow him on Twitter or Instagram. Kyle, again, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll be right back here on the Spotlight.